Hello guys, welcome back to my Let's Play of Jagged Alliance 2 version 1.13. This is part 4 and we have quite a bit of business to take care of in this part, so let's get right to it. Yeah. First we can talk to this little boy, one of the few remaining civilians who live in Omerta. Mommy said never die to strangers. And he's well behaved. He All runs right. off because he's not allowed to talk yeah. to strangers. Understood. But we can follow him to his mother, yeah. who will All then right. be of help to us. Standing by. Yeah. Why are you here? How could it be that you were sent by Enrico? He has been dead for more than ten years. You want me to believe that you are working for a dead man? I would suggest that you leave Omerta before you, yourself. Become one. She doesn't believe us, Standing but by. luckily Understood. Enrico gave us a letter which we can use to convince her. You can either just pick it up in your inventory and pass it on, or you can speak with her again, click give, and then do it th that way. Doesn't really matter. Hmm. A letter from Enrico Civaldori. He has not forgotten us. Very few people are aware that he's alive. As far as most of the people in Auruko are concerned, he was murdered over a decade ago. We had given up hope of ever hearing from Enrico again. Who would believe that someone living in the comforts of exile would care about this dismal country? Very well then. Follow me. Do not make any quick moves. Miguel's men will be nervous. You do not wish to intimidate them. The Drana has brutally bombed and attacked us for over two straight months. Alright, she'll lead us to the rebel hideout now. Uh, if you don't know where to go, don't worry about losing her. She will stop in regular intervals to check if your mercenaries are still close enough. And if they are not, she'll wait. Always wait for her to leave the sector, otherwise she might get stuck here because she has a checkpoint right here at the end. Okay. Standing by. Understood. 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 Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Let's see if we can find the first aid kit in here. There's a chance of one being in this drawer. All right. Because we are Super short on groovy. medical supplies. Hmm. Ah, that's great. That's perfect. Okay. We only have the one uh, medical kit here, so and we'll get one in a moment from Ira. But okay. having first aid kits is useful because they are not as expensive as medical kits. Why have you brought them here? Have you lost your mind, woman? You bring death to all of us. They have been sent by Enrico Civaldori. They're here to help us, Dimitri. They must speak with Miguel. I would never bring them here without proof of this. In respect of your husband, I take your word. We will go down. But if you make mistake, Fatima, you will die with them. Do not move, and no one will die. Fatima say they are here to help us. She says she have proof, Carlos. Enrico has enlisted mercenaries to aid us in the struggle. I have a letter addressed to Miguel. It is signed by Enrico himself and contains details of the night we helped him flee Auruco. Details only he would know. Enrico? Silvatore? Most suspicious. I question his reasons. I'm still here, by the way. I just don't want to interrupt them. I do not. Let me see this letter. Here. Hmm, it be true. Enrico has sent men to help us. On behalf of my rebel force and the people of Arulco, I welcome you. We are very much in need of your aid. Diana wishes to remove Omerta from the map of this country. 
She is evil, a driven bitch. I do what I can. That will do, Ira. I am sure our friends have heard of her nature. If not, they will know soon enough. We are completely prepared and confident, Miguel, and accept your welcome and the challenges that lie ahead. I have lost over 30 men in the last month. My force is down to the people you see here. But I do have a few trusted people living in the Arulco countryside. The people of Arulco would overthrow Didana with pleasure, but they live in fear of her, and rightfully so. She be heartless and brutal. She has robbed our country of its money and its soul. Getting their confidence be our biggest problem. The people must feel we are capable of defeating her. Yet, without their support, we cannot. We are missing soldiers and equipment. You could not have come at a better time. We are short of food too, Miguel. We need safe passage to Drassen, or more people will die. Yes. Carlos be my close advisor. He is right. He usually be right. Making a safe route to Drazen to get supplies be a priority. If you can remove Didana's forces from your path, there is a priest in Drazen named Father Walker. He be a drunk of poor judgment. However, he will be sympathetic to our situation. Find him and tell him no more than you need to. I will send others to fetch the supplies he will gather. I wish you luck and express my gratitude. Alright, now that we've been welcomed to the Rebel Hideout by Miguel and Carlos and Ira and Dimitri, we can speak with all of them and in the end recruit Ira. We could recruit her right away, but I prefer speaking to the other guys first, because she will lead you out of the bunker. You can get back down, but it's two unnecessary load screens. Not that they take long, but still. I have faith in us. Victory will come. We have nothing to talk about. You called? We have nothing to talk about. It does not seem right at this moment. I can spare Ira. She is quick learner and knows the priest well. I believe he might even have some passion for her. Okay, before I talk to the rest of the rebels, a few things. Uh, you heard Dimitri say to Fatima when we were still upstairs that uh, he'll let us down in respect uh, to her husband. Uh, I've heard many people assume that Dimitri is Fatima's husband for some reason, uh, but I think that one line makes it pretty clear that they are not husband and wife, but that Fatima's husband is someone else who's respected in the rebel uh, forces, but he's not Dimitri. Also, you might have noticed that Mergis gained a level of experience right here. Uh, that's for completing the quest of handing over the letter to Miguel. Every quest you get in this game will reward all of the mercenaries present in the sector when you hand it in with experience points or rather with the chance to gain quite a few experience points. So if you have any low-level guys, any low-level mercenaries you want to train up without uh, putting them in danger, without having them fight the enemy, you can try having them present when you turn in quests. For example, this one, where well, you don't have many options because it's just in the beginning, but also later on when you escort the tourists, for example, and get them to uh, the Drassen airport, or when you find Skyrider in the wilderness and bring him back to his helicopter. All of these are considered quests and will reward all present mercenaries who are not unconscious uh, with experience points. That being said, you should pay attention to how high your mercenaries are who will receive those uh, experience points. If they are close to a level up, which with this quest are the mercenaries who were previously level 1, like Mergus here or uh, MD or Spider if you have them on your team, you might want to extend their contracts 
before going down into the rebel hideout because as I said in a previous video the fee goes up by 25% the daily or weekly and two weekly fee they all go up by 25% whenever a mercenary hits his uh, hits a level up they will keep working for the old price uh, for the time you already had them under contract so try to give them a longer contract if you notice that they'll level up in a moment and you have the money to spare to extend the contract right then and there if you wait a day or if you wait until after they've leveled up you'll just pay more for the same effect all right let's talk to the other rebels What can I do for you? Our people are suffering in hunger. You must do something. It cannot continue without the loss of more life. I hope we'll be all right. The time is not right. I am needed in Omerta. You can recruit all of these four with the green shirts later on, but uh, at the moment we can only get Ira. Uh, I just talked to them with all the options because you might want to hear all of the different lines they have to say or they say in answer to your questions yeah our people are suffering in hunger you must do something i have to go now yes me i am guard it is what i do best i do not have time you called? I stay with Miguel. He must decide. Yeah. Uh, let's see if Fatima has anything new to say. The children and the people of Omerta have put their faith in you. We wish you the best. Well, I'm a very busy woman. Me? No. My children are in need of me. <laughs> All right, didn't think so. All right. These are empty, but uh, yeah, let's just open them anyway, just because we can. Nothing. And Nothing. then grab Ira. I'm Ira. I came to Oroko five years ago as part of an effort to supply humanitarian aid. I soon realized the only aid they needed was in getting rid of Deidreana, by whichever means possible. Miguel's rebel force has been together for almost two decades. They are trustworthy and loyal. They will accept you as one of their own as long as you do no harm. The rebel force is a dedicated one. Unfortunately, there are only a few of us left. I have nothing left to say. Okay, let's grab her then. She'll also lead us out in a moment. All right. I could be of help with some of the ins and outs of this country and its people. But I must tell you, I'm not a professional like you guys. I'm afraid my marksmanship is a little weak for a soldier. Miguel used me mostly as a medic and a lookout. Anyways, I'm sure we'll make out okay. Let's get going. I'll lead the way. I know many people don't like Ira very much, but I think she's very useful. Her marksmanship is okay she's a decent medic and she also has the paramedic skill so she can heal stats wounds and is generally faster with bandaging so that's not too bad and once you train up her medical a bit she's very useful also sh uh, she has the teaching skill and being a, a native of Arulco well not a native of, uh, but a rebel she gets a bonus for training uh, militia too. It's very small but I'll take what I can get. Her leadership is very low. You'll have to get her up to 20 until she can actively participate in training militia which will then in turn also increase her leadership but until you hit 20 you'll have to have a practice. Uh, it depends on your any setting how high the leadership has to be. I think the standard default setting is 20, but you can alter it. If you don't like it, if you want to have uh, the same gameplay as in the vanilla game, you can just set it to zero. 
All right. So she's a non-swimmer. Don't take her into swamps or deep water because she'll expend energy five times faster than a swimmer. Here we also got the analysis of our IMP creation. Uh, I think you got it right away, but uh, I forgot opening it. I'll click through this so you can read it if you want. It's in parts, very funny, and it's not that much to read anyway. This used to be very uh, important to read if you played with the van uh, vanilla game, because all these uh, special character traits couldn't be just selected in the questionnaire you had to answer to get your skills, but uh, they were only found in here. They were also not listed in the personnel manager. The personnel manager only listed your basic uh, skills, so auto weapons or heavy weapons for example, but not the character traits like optimist and the disabilities like nervous or non-swimmer. It was very hard getting a character trait other than normal. It was, it was quite easy to get friendly, but anything else was pretty much impossible. I think I had an optimist once, but I'm not even sure about that. Alright, that's all of that. Let's get back here. Um, I'll have a quick look around in the sector because there's some more things to grab. TNT, some ammo and some very little but still some money in this house. I'm on it. There's stuff. I'm on it. Something maybe. I'm on it. Money's not here, but nothing. Yeah. It's only ten dollars anyways okay. if it's there, so no problem. But the bloody knife might come in handy. Alright, let's do some inventory management now that we also have Iris stuff. She's a decent fighter actually, because she has decent agility, high dexterity. She's useful. Uh, she's won me quite a few battles with just a mini 14 behind some militia or supporting my main fighting force. So I would always keep her around training militia and helping in defending sectors. Okay, the first aid kit goes to Murgus for now because he's uh, got the highest medical skill except for Fox of course, but she already has the medical kit. I prefer using the first aid kit for bandaging uh, wounds on the battlefield because it uh, is worth a lot less than a medical kit. The medical kit can, unlike the first aid kit, also be used for the doctor assignment, which is required to patch up your mercenaries after the battle. They, When you uh, just bandage them, after the battle with, for example, first aid kits. They won't bleed any longer, but the hit points are still lost. So uh, to get back the hit points, you can either have them rest for a long, long time or set your doctor to doctor. He requires a medical kit for that, or she in this case. She'll also take it in her main hand for that automatically. Uh, or, yeah, and with the doctor you also need to set a patient. I can't set him as a patient now because he's not wounded, but uh, yeah, if he were wounded I could click on patient here and Fox would take care of him. Also doctors always also treat themselves, so if you have a wounded doctor and a patient, the doctor will treat the patient and himself, which uh, is a bit slower of course because the progress of treatment is divided between the two. Now, canteens are useful as well, because they can help you restore uh, energy, the blue bar. With 1.13, energy recovery on the battlefield is a lot slower than in 1.12, so canteens are even more valuable. 
especially if you get hit by a stun grenade or a tear gas grenade and don't have a gas mask, uh, it can be very useful. But also for other things, because uh, running, as you can see, expends energy quite swiftly. Swimming is also not exactly uh, friendly with your energy. Uh, or being shot, of course, <laughs> drops energy rather quickly in 1.13 quicker than in 1.12. Alright, everyone should have a, a canteen. We cannot give one to everyone at the moment. Murgus can pass one on. I think I'll give this to Grizzly because he might be on the front line more than Steven, who I'd like to keep back a bit uh, behind the others because he's the squad leader. He shouldn't uh, get hit too often, otherwise the others might not think very highly of him. Also, he has the highest range on his weapon, so I think it's all right to keep him up back a bit. Uh, yeah, the throwing knives are not that useful with the new chance to hit system because the range is very limited. They used to have great range in the vanilla game, but uh, and in this game too with the all chance to hit system, but yeah, they're not that good anymore. I'll give one to Fox for now. Uh, I'll redistribute the weapons a bit, because Meltdown at the moment uses a machine pistol. You can check the type of weapon you have with you here. Uh, it's relevant for the different skills, because certain skills, like for example auto-fire, uh, give a bonus to assault rifles, uh, light machine guns and submachine guns. And if you're not sure what type of weapon you have, you can just check here. Gunslingers do get a small bonus with MPs, but the bonus for regular pistols and revolvers is a lot higher. Uh, the fire rate bonus, so they use up less action points for shooting. So I'll take the MP from her and hand it over to Grizzly, I think, because Grizzly is uh, strong enough to handle the burst fire properly. Not that the burst fire on this weapon is that hard to control, but still. Um, let's see here. Then she's going to be doing uh, quite a bit of shooting. So I think, okay, let's pass that to Grizzly for the time being. Can take as much ammo as he wants. Oh, uh, as long as you don't really know the LBE system and what you can fit in which pocket, I recommend always stuffing the things into the pockets that are the smallest, uh, because otherwise you might get confused and think you don't have any room left. While well, you could, because uh, if I picked up the pistol, for example, uh, well, it's a bad example, but <laughs> if I picked this up and uh, wanted to fit it uh, in one of these pockets, or in this pocket, for example, uh, and I had stored my pistol magazines in here, I had, might think, oh no, that's already full, I can't uh, get it in here. But if you just fill up the smallest pockets first, you'll rarely run into problems of that sort. <coughs> uh, once you know the system, it's no problem. Uh, putting the stuff where you want to put it, but in the beginning it can be very helpful. Also, you might have noticed uh, in the l at the end of the last episode that I put all of the ammo stacks in the second slot and left the first one free. Uh, that's just my personal order I normally use in the LBE. First slot is always a first aid kit, uh, unless the mercenary in question has a medical skill of zero, of course, then he won't be carrying a med kit. But uh, for all others, the first kit, uh, first slot is reserved for a med kit. Uh, at least as long as they wear LBE that has a assault rifle pouch as the first slot, which most have. I think all except for the Hunter West and the Saw West have a uh, assault rifle slot here in the first position. So uh, all mercenaries who wear one of the other LBEs can put the first aid kit there. Then in the second slot I usually carry my ammo for the main weapon. Uh, you could do it the other way around or a completely different way. I just find it helpful to have a system so you can easily 
uh, find things and also replenish things. Because, say, all of my mercenaries had um, first aid kit in the first slot, and I wanted to replenish all of the first aid kits, I could just pick one up. Let's imagine this rock is the first aid kit. Uh, pick it up, then keep uh, control held down, then uh, use the right arrow key to sw switch to the next uh, mercenary, click on their first aid kit, click, 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 and all of those would be filled up without too much hassle. Okay, the TNT, um, I think I'm our best explosives guy. This I'll put in the backpack because explosives can be detonated when you are hit by a grenade, for example, or another explosion like a rocket. You don't want to have that happen, so only carry the explosives you want to use in combat on your person. Uh, we won't need this TNT in combat, so I'll leave it in the backpack, which he'll drop, which Murgus will drop anyway at the beginning of combat, so he doesn't run into trouble with his uh, when he's hit by a grenade because these can hurt a lot if they explode in your pocket, as you can imagine. Alright, Murgus will stick with the shotgun for now. I hope we'll find more pistols soon. Steven can keep his SIG. Then uh, Fox, I think we found a bit of ammo for the Makarovs, so we could split them up. So, for example, I'm thinking about giving one of these to Meltdown. And two mags, because Meltdown will most likely shoot a little bit more than Fox. Let's hand these two weapons to Meltdown. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Alright. Uh, you can also get the second pair of wire cutters. And of course, ammo. and the speed loader. We don't have much ammo for the 38 special yet, but I'm sure we'll find some soon enough. Also, always check if your mercenary with the current loadout can use his fists if necessary. So, if you, especially if you have someone with two pistols, uh, make sure that you can get them out of his hands, or at least one of them, so he can use his fists, or she in this case. She could get rid of both, so that's perfect. Then the high power... I'm not sure... I think I leave Ira without a weapon for now, because she uh, doesn't really need to fight at the moment. We don't have the, <laughs> the arms to equip her, so she can hand over the high power. Uh, I'm thinking either as a second weapon for Fox, because she's ambidextrous, but you don't have too much ammo for this high power, I think I'll just give it back to Murgus. He can make good use of it, I think, because the shotgun is very slow. He might not always have the action points to use it. The rocks, well, don't need them, but I'll just take them anyway for now. We can drop them in grass and forget about them. Now about uh, armor. Uh, I think Murgus with his shotgun has decent range for the beginning, especially spotting slugs instead of, uh, instead of um, buckshot, so his range is alright. By the way, all the sight range and gun range modifiers you see here are stated in percent. They are not percentages though, they are flat tiles. 50% is 5 tiles. and. Uh, 70% would be 7 tiles, etc. Just uh, divide by 10 and scratch the percent. It's not a percentage, it's just flat 5. You can also see it uh, here, for example, uh, with the shotgun. Base range 15 plus 5 through the slugs equals 20. If it, was f uh, if it were 50%, uh, he'd have to have uh, either, either 22 or 23 range in total, and plus 7 or plus 8 here. Alright, um, he also has the ammo, that's fine. About uh, armor, I think Fox should hand this over to Grizzly and stay back a bit. 
Uh, I don't like having mercenaries without armor fight uh, on the front line because they might get killed in one shot if the enemy uses glazer ammo. That's always a possibility of course because armor doesn't always come into play when you get shot. You can see here the basic armor strength. That's how much uh, the damage is reduced but only if the armor is actually hit. Here you can see the coverage value. This means that um, for this flak jacket that in one fourth of the cases and 25% of the hits you receive the armor won't even come into play. The bullet will bypass the armor completely and do full damage. So it's always dangerous uh, to get hit because the bullet might do full damage without even uh, considering the armor, but uh, you'll have to live with that. As I've said before, no risk, no fun anyway. Okay, so we grabbed all the stuff. You can make sure of that by clicking on this Show Items button or pressing I in the strategic view. Uh, here you'll see that both of these sectors don't show a number. If there's an item present, you'll see a small number stating the amount of stuff. This is a bug that sometimes you cannot pick it up. Either close and reopen it. If it still doesn't work, leave, go down to the sector, go back up and then it should work. The sector inventory, as you might have noticed, is very useful for distributing stuff, for picking items up after a battle. So it's one of the most useful tools you have at your disposal for equipping your mercenaries. A lot easier than uh, trying to pass things on between them. You can do that too, you, you can, can do it here. Uh, for example, if I wanted to pass the knife to Murgus, Standing by. but I don't you think can't? that's uh, very useful and very practical if you have to pass around lots of items. Let's see about the LBE, I think. Meltdown didn't really have any room for another holster, but she doesn't need it. She can put one pistol here and one here. So that's fine for now. Uh, and Ira can keep this for now. He can also get rid of this completely if he needed to, but that's not really necessary. It's uh, enough if you can get one hand free. Okay. Let's travel a bit, or rather let's think about our strategy for a moment. Uh, you can see here on the map that there are several towns that you can and usually want to liberate. Uh, one of the standard routes is Drassen, then San Mona and Chicena, and maybe Cambria next or Grum. Uh, it really depends on how you want to play. There are also people who go to Alma after Drassen, but Drassen is usually the first stop. It also makes sense because, as you've heard in the dialogue with Miguel, the rebels need food and a uh, pater walker uh, in Drassen can help them with that. So it, the game basically tells you to go to Drassen first. If you uh, didn't turn off the Drassen counterattack in the INI file, you might regret, regret going to Drassen first, but uh, I deactivated it, so I think we'll go to Drassen as our first town. You can see that some of these towns have mines. You can make that more clear by clicking on the mine icon or press the M key. The San Mona mine is already abandoned. Uh, the other five are active. You can see how much they're going to produce for you once you have all the sectors of the town and the loyalty up to 100% because both the amount of sectors of the town you own and the uh, loyalty you have in the town uh, influence the amount of money you get. Drassen here possible production 7200. The daily production is zero because we do not own it at the moment. And yeah, that's, uh, usually there are silver mines, only the Grum mine is gold and it usually produces 
a bit more than the other mines. But the mine income is random. Uh, sometimes Drassen is above 10,000, sometimes it's only 6,000. Uh, and Shizena can be between, I think, 3,200 and 5,000 or something like that. Uh, Chicena will always produce less than the other mines. Uh, I think Drassen, Alma and Cambria are pretty much the same. Maybe a bit low in Drassen, I'm not sure, but Grum will usually be the highest. Alright, so Drassen 7,200, uh, Chicena uh, 3,600, Grum 14,400, here 10,800 and Alma also 10,800. Uh, that's decent, I'd say, especially uh, that the Drassen mine isn't at the lowest possible setting because this is uh, the one we get first so we want to get the most out of it. As I've mentioned before you get mine income at uh, 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. At each of these times you will get one fourth of the daily income so in our case that's uh, zero dollars of course but with the Drassen mine uh, that's what we... Oh, sorry. It only shows in the mine view, so mind that. Uh, so that's 1,800 per uh, three hours during the daylight hours. Keep that in mind. Also, considering your daily expenses, but I'll talk about that a bit later. All right. Uh, I want to approach Drassen by first taking the middle sector, because... Uh, there's a chance that we might find uh, MP5K uh, A4 in there. So that's a useful weapon. Uh, nice machine pistol you can use to suppress enemies uh, or kill them with controlled bursts. So I'd like to get that first. Also I prefer attacking the airport from the south because you have some decent cover in the trees here you don't have to maneuver your mercenaries all the way around here which is possible too but yeah I prefer taking this sector first because I think it's the easiest and we can get the mp5k here also I then first before I go to the airport will take Drassen mine the mine is more important than having access to the airport at the moment uh, and if we get hurt while taking the mine we still have the mine and can't go to the airport, but if we got hurt while taking the airport, we would be left without the mine for now and would have to patch ourselves up first before we could try uh, taking it. So I like to put the priority on the mine. Also, there's a small quest in the mid sector where you can get about uh, 12 or 13 percent of loyalty in Drassen which will increase, in turn, the mine income. If we are successful and manage to capture both of these sectors without uh, any injuries or only light injuries, we can try capturing the airport in the same uh, go, but we'll see about that. This road is usually patrolled by a group of about six or eight uh, soldiers. We could go this way ar uh, along the road, which is also the standard route the game suggests, but uh, I prefer going the sneaky route up here and then just cutting down here. It takes a bit longer, but not really, because I'll show you a small trick in a moment. Well, it's not really a trick, but uh, just uh, using the game's mechanics to your advantage. Uh, one thing first, the game will normally pick the quickest route for you. You can see the ETA down below here, the ETA in hours and minutes. Uh, traveling within city sectors or within a city or a town only costs, uh, takes five minutes. Traveling by road takes uh, one hour 44 on these roads normally, or getting from here to here and then traveling on the roads takes 1 hour 29. For us it's a bit quicker because Murgis is a hunter and hunters uh, increase the traveling speed. You can force the game, instead of taking the quickest route, you can force it to take 
the most direct route by pressing the shift, pressing and holding the shift key. You'll see the time changes significantly from 9 hours 43 minutes to 13 hours 43 minutes, but it's the most direct route. However, I would not recommend traveling like this, just saying, oh, I want to attack this sector, let's click here, for several, several reasons. First, you can't really pick the route that easily. Also, it will just uh, go past occupied sectors. The game doesn't make a difference between uh, an empty neutral sector or one of your own sectors with militia anim and enemy sectors. So you should pay mind to that. If we went like this, we'd have to attack the airport first. Also, when attacking, you should try to have your blue energy bar as high as possible on all your mercenaries. So sleep first. Travel to the sector adjacent to the one you want to attack and then have your mercenaries sleep at least a bit. Uh, you don't want to be very low on the blue bar, get it as high up as possible unless you need to get there fast because you need the mine for example or you want to attack while it's still uh, daylight hours and not night. Night starts at 9 p.m. Uh, and uh, the sun comes up at around 6.30, it's fully light by 7. So I think 6.45 it starts uh, getting a bit lighter, then at 7 it uh, reaches standard daytime brightness. The midday hours from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. are extra bright, which reduces uh, sight range a bit. Okay, let's start traveling. I prefer traveling one sector at a time for many reasons. You have most control, you can check what the enemies I'm are doing it. in this time or during this time uh, and react accordingly. If sh you can always cancel, of course, by right-clicking the destination column. They'll just return to the sector they started from or if you'd already started traveling a bit, they will uh, travel back, which takes time, of course. Um, okay. They can travel here for now. Also, uh, the next reason uh, I like traveling one sector at a time is because uh, you can get some power naps in between traveling and traveling onwards to the next sector. I'll show you in a moment, but first let's watch the first Dead Runner cutscene. I won't do any commentary during the cutscene, I'll just let it play out, so you can skip it if you don't want to watch it again. This better be good. Forgive the intrusion, your highness, but one of our north patrols has been attacked. Elliot, you idiot! We crushed those rebels in Omerta! How can it be? <laughs> From what we have learned, your majesty, the rebels seem to have some sort of foreign aid, commando types. We speculate they arrived on the helicopter that was spotted earlier. Commando types? What sort of commando types? From where? They may be hired mercenaries, your highness. There weren't many. What? How would the rebels get the means to recruit mercenaries? Well, no matter. Send me their bodies for examination. Uh, um, the rebel party seems to have used the element of surprise to their advantage, my queen. They defeated us. Send my troops to the location at once. Yes, your highness. All right, that's our first real glance at Daedrana and Elliot, her not so trusty advisor, who manages to rack up quite a few slaps in the face over the course of the game. All right, uh, let's, uh, let me show you what I meant with the power naps. You can control the time compression by requested. the plus and minus keys also, or you can click the arrows. Also, you can toggle by pressing spacebar between paused and the last setting you had it at. So f for me, it would be 30 minutes now. Okay, let's go down here. Also a reason why I like to travel one sector at a time, because you get to explore a bit. Sometimes you find 
uh, items like uh, bloody knives or a bit of ammo or, or other useful Understood. things. Camouflage kits or sometimes uh, even ceramic plates. Understood. Which yeah. you can use to protect okay. your mercenaries Nothing. from bullets. Nothing. Nothing. Also, first aid kits can nothing. be found from time to time. You got my ear. Well, nothing here this time, but no matter. Didn't take that long to check anyways. You can also see here number of items zero, if you're not sure if anyone found anything. Uh, now that we started out with 100 energy, uh, they are not tired, so I can't send them to sleep. But uh, sleep and energy recovery and all the different uh, assignments you can give your mercenaries here are evaluated at every full hour. For assignments like repairing or doctoring or practicing, the mercenary needs to have been on that assignment for at least 45 minutes in the last hour for it to count as him being on assignment. So. If you arrive at 8.49, there's not much point in sending these people to train anything if you plan on moving on at 9 a.m. or at 9.59. Because training is only, or any assignment and also sleep is only uh, evaluated at the full hour. And anything but sleep is only evaluated if the mercenary has been on that assignment for 45 minutes in the past hour. So uh, if they were tired enough and could sleep, we could sleep for 11 minutes until the next hour where sleep is evaluated and they would regain energy. As much energy as they'd have regained if they had slept for a whole hour. So you can save quite a bit of energy traveling so your mercenaries don't arrive at the location and need to sleep for eight hours straight to regain all the energy they lost. So you can save a lot of time with this in the long run. It takes a bit of time traveling like this, but well, you pay mercenaries by days, so it's worth investing some planning time to get them uh, to okay. save some in-game time. They don't have to spend sleeping. I made it! Let's do something already! The forest here is empty, so we don't have to run around searching for items. Okay, now we can do the sleep thingy. We only need 13 minutes to get to the full hour, so let's do that with slow 5 minutes so we don't lose it. You can see that they already regained energy and can travel onwards. Made it intact. I recommend not using the 60 minute time compression all the time, as many people do, because you might miss some details of enemy movement, for example, t uh, or miss when to put your soldiers, your mercenaries to sleep. I'll show you that once we have more going on on the map. Let's have a quick look around here. Gotcha. Sometimes a crowbar in here, not that we need I yet another one, it. but still worth Stand checking. You called? You got my ear. Nothing. Yeah. All right. You called? I said you uh, can often find some hmm. stuff here. It's always uh, a tough call to make. Steal this money from these poor people or leave it there but it doesn't have an ownership flag otherwise we couldn't pick it up from the sector inventory items with an ownership flag meaning that they belong to a, a NPC who will attack you if you take the item uh, will be grayed out here you'll see them in the sector inventory but you cannot pick them up so in this case uh, I don't like having stuff lying around so I'll be the bad guy and take this kids pocket Bye. money Will do. It's for a good cause in the long run anyway. We'll yeah. help this help this poor kid you get a proper education 
once we opened up a school here or something. Once peacetime comes around. Sorry, but I can't manage it. I always like to have my yeah, I hear you. weaker soldiers try kicking in the door first because they yeah. need to gain some strength. Don't worry, I won't be doing this with every door, just to mm. show you in the beginning. Uh, yeah, I can just hand this to Grizzly as well. I'm sure we'll find another 9mm pistol soon, so he can share some of the ammo. And Steven has a lot of 9mm ammo too. We are good on in that department for now. If you find the MP5K here, that's a 9mm weapon too. Now we could sleep for a minute to have Fox sleep. Uh, to have Fox regain some energy. She needs a lot of sleep, her beauty sleep. So we'll do that. It's just one minute spent. And that's enough Done. for her to regain. I know this looks a bit like an abuse and may maybe in a way it is, but uh, I don't like having my soldiers, my mercenaries sleep for hours on end from traveling if I know I can avoid it doing it like that. And I can justify it to myself that they just needed a, s a short nap. A couple of short, short naps uh, during the day are more useful than one long sleep. I know that's not waterproof, but yeah, that's just something you can do. Made it intact. Okay, we can sleep again with now Fox isn't tired, but no matter. And then, ah, sorry, I sometimes get that wrong but it doesn't really matter this one minute here or there okay now that we are fit we can attack Drassen but I will do that in the next episode I'll see you then bye bye